We call ourselves the Tekene people. It means people of the rock. We were given the name because we went back and forth across the mountain ranges. I've always lived here, but we had a cabin on the Parsnip, and um, I loved living in that cabin. I remember being shaken by the by the dozers when they went by, when they were going to start flooding. Once the reservoir was flooded, we don't get a lot of grayling in this area anymore. I think grayling did have a, um, a, a special place in everyone's heart. Um, the elders talk about loving to eat grayling. Many populations of Arctic grayling were completely wiped out when their home streams were flooded by the Williston Reservoir. The part of the Parsnip River above the flood zone is home to one of the few remaining Arctic grayling populations in the Williston watershed. The Parsnip is just a couple hours drive north of Prince George, so these grayling are prized by Northern BC's recreational angling community. There's very few places in the world that you can have this kind of an experience. I might only fish grayling one day a year or two days a year, but um, I just think the place where they live is, is one of the most beautiful places on earth and it needs to be protected, even over fishing. And uh, you know, it's, uh, even as a fisherman, we can, we can look after things ourselves, use barbless hooks, you know, release your fish properly, keep them wet. A recent increase in forestry and pipeline development in the Parsnip River watershed pose new threats to the grayling populations that survived the flooding. Arctic grayling are especially sensitive to the negative effects of watershed development. Uh, increased peak flows, decreased summer low flows, and elevated levels of sediment, especially in the streams. They're visual feeders and they depend on clear water. Between 1995 and 2007, BC Hydro's Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program monitored the parsnip grayling by conducting snorkeling counts in index sections of the Table and Anzac Rivers. Starting in 2018, these surveys were resumed and important new study components were added. It's a twofold purpose to the study. One is to assess the health of Arctic grayling populations that remain in the Parsnip River watershed. The second is to identify the distribution of critical habitats, because these are going to be our targets for habitat conservation. In six long-term index sites that are distributed in the Table and Anzac Rivers, we're conducting replicated swimming surveys. We're essentially swimming down the river evenly spaced apart, so we're not over counting fish and we're essentially counting all the fish and estimating their size and we're doing that across two teams and once we compare the differences between those two teams we can then estimate what the abundance is of grayling within a specific river reach. The results of the study so far suggest that the grayling population in the Parsnip watershed is stable but this trend may change given new threats from land use. Learning about critical habitats across much broader scales, we're using uh, a more rapid method, where we're just doing a single snorkeling pass, otherwise using the same method. In 2020, a powerful new method called eDNA was added to help identify critical habitats of Arctic grayling. eDNA is short for environmental DNA and refers to microscopic particles that slough off organisms which can then be detected in the environment. The cells come off its body and whatever else, you know, drifts downstream and we can filter with these things. There's enough eDNA from that fish in the water column that this method will catch it on the filter and the methods in the laboratory identify that type of DNA that is Arctic grayling and not any other fish that might also be present in there. But it can't do is determine what life history stage is present. And so that's why we need other methods, and in this case, another elegant method of snorkel surveys, low impact, swim through the stream, and use visual contact. Using these two methods, we're able to find brand new populations 
in tributaries of the Parsnip River, which we're working on right now. Studies are very important because, um, because they're probably uncovering some knowledge that we didn't understand as well. We just, like, we know what we know, but you, you don't know what you don't know, right? Together, the snorkeling and eDNA studies are helping to identify Arctic grayling habitat that needs to be protected in the parsnip. They are also helping us understand whether current levels of habitat protection are working. There's all kinds of natural things that go on that we have no control over, but we can certainly control our practices. 